Picture this, you're on a warm tropical beach, the sun is shining, the ocean is calm, but out in the water, something is starting to stir. It begins with a tiny ripple in the atmosphere, like a little spark that could grow into something much bigger. This ripple is looking for fuel, and the best fuel, the warm tropical ocean waters. For this engine to really start revving, the ocean needs to be at least 80 degrees. That's when the heat from the ocean powers up the storm, causing thunder clouds to pop up and creating an area of low pressure in the atmosphere. And as the air gets sucked in, it starts rising, causing even more storms to form. As the system grows, it becomes a tropical disturbance and then a tropical depression. Once the winds pick up to 39 miles per hour, it turns into a tropical storm and gets a name like Tropical Storm Sally or Tropical Storm Joe. And depending on the atmosphere, the storm can keep strengthening as it moves over the warm ocean waters. When winds hit 74 miles per hour, it officially becomes a hurricane. And if the winds reach 96 miles per hour or greater, it becomes a category two hurricane. And when the winds get above 111 miles per hour, that's a category three major hurricane. And then if those winds hit 130 miles per hour, it's a category four causing catastrophic damage. Then at 157 miles per hour, it becomes a category five hurricane, the strongest hurricane Hurricane of all. Once the hurricane hits land, it loses its precious fuel, the warm ocean water. And without that, the storm starts to weaken and it loses power as it moves across the land. So a hurricane needs a warm ocean to stay strong, but once it lands, it starts running out of gas. And that's how a little ripple in the ocean can grow into a massive hurricane. And that's why it's always better to be prepared for whatever storm may head your way.